Well, it's that time of year where you want to get out of the house, get outside in the cold, and start doing some actual outdoor activities. We thought about trying to learn how to build the perfect snowman, but why build a snowman when you can make a snow bear? A snow bear. So we came over to Perspective, which is a local architecture design firm, to talk to architect Ryan Kranz about how to actually do these amazing snow sculptures. You've got all the tips for us. I do. All this is tips. exciting. I mean, how long have you been doing this? I've been doing this for nearly 20 years now. I usually do one a year. It's about my limit, but okay. it, yeah. it, it gets tiring. So now, I can see, yeah. One of the ways I first found out about kind of these snow sculptures and where you've gotten a lot of your experience is at a local event, Fun Ski, that we do every year for um, Children's Home Society, which is an amazing way to give back. But a lot of people will go out and carve these crazy cool sculptures. Yeah, and I hope that they do. Uh, yeah, Fun Ski's been a great event. I've been happy to be part of that for many, many years but I, I really hope that maybe this will inspire somebody to go out in their own front yard and uh, do this yeah. for themselves. Yeah, what's the first step to, to building something like this? Well, the first step in this case was to take this big snow drift that was in our back patio and pack it as tightly as I could. So I just shoveled it all up, threw it in a big mound and jumped on it and packed it and did as much as I could. So you want to take it and pack it tight like as though it were a snowball and get it as tight as you can to get it to shape right. Do you okay. want to build it up to as high as it is now? You, that's how much you pack it? To as high even as it is. even higher. So what I did was build it probably up to about here and packed it as tight as I could, and then started removing pieces to start to shape it away, so that you can actually cut into it in spots and get it get the form that you're looking for. Okay, so what are some of the key tools to get this done? You've got we've got I've got a hammer. <laughs> yeah, this looks dangerous, but I got this thing. <laughs> it is so shovels, of course, your snow shovels, your spades, the broad point shovels. I really like. The, these are the big shaping tools. This one is a little broad point garden shovel. Okay. Comes in really handy for being able to cut in a little more precisely and shape it. And then you start going into the little more detailed fine tools, usually that are straight metal objects like this is from for drywall. Yep. Um, small chisels and that. It's tough to get too detailed when you're when you're doing this um, in the snow. You got to remember your medium's just snow, so it's want to flake off and, yeah. and that on you. Uh, and then one of the tools that I find really interesting is, is this is a truss mending plate that came from a hardware store, just screwed onto a block of wood, and then you, you just run it across the snow and it really will form it into the round shapes and cuts into it very, very well. So this I, is an invention of yours. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you came up with that yourself. <laughs> yeah, I needed something to shape it like as though it was a file on there and okay. this does the job. Cool. So, cause I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna touch this, but you were sh telling us this, you can kind of even like use like a circular motion or yes. kind of do whatever yep. you and want. I can show that. Okay, the, the, yeah. So just down here, you can see this is very soft snow and it's just gonna come right off of there by yep. shaping it like that or just straight brushing it you okay. take it right off of there oh that's excellent and then afterwards you can you can pat this down to smooth yes. it out yep. or is yes. that the idea yep okay it off there and it'll smooth it out yeah what's wow. the hammer for so the hammer is another one of those shaping tools that you don't really think about <laughs> that you just would take it and pull across to pull blocks oh, of snow off totally or to knock them off sure so you can get a little more leverage in a little I uh, bet. More precision with the hammer. Okay. And, and this, I don't yeah. even know what this is in re real life. <laughs> in real life, that is a draw knife. It's used for uh, stripping the bark off of logs. Oh, okay. So this Duh. is something that can <laughs> really quickly round off an object. So yep. by pulling it through, it sure. will it will it will take a lot a big slice of snow off of this. Now a lot of people would use even maybe a power tool or a chainsaw too, but I know Funski right. doesn't allow that. So you Funsky guys have really right. kind of honed your craft with right. the with right. just the hand tools. Trying to figure out the the best ways to do that without bringing a drill or a chainsaw out there. Yeah, well, it sounds like there's almost two styles of ice sculpture, like the hard ice sculpture, but then there's this correct packed yep. ice sculpture. Are they both called this maybe a snow sculpture. Ice or? Yeah, generally, this is they're going to refer to this as a snow sculpture. The ice okay. sculpture is really going to be that purified block of hard ice that you really have to chisel like stone. Yeah. And you've got a kids version too, because I this do. is a fun thing. I know at Fun Skia, there's kids always out there too. Yep. We've got some non-metal. So yeah, some of these that. can be kind of sharp, like the chisels and that. So mm -hmm. you can find these uh, little plastic rigid, that has to be pretty stiff, pretty rigid tool, but you can find these, and these are really great for kids to be able to cut and shape yeah. into, the, into the snow. But some of these other ones are not sharp, so they, they'll be good. But a block like this, 
might be a little much for a, for a young one. How long does it take to do something like this? Uh, this, so because I was doing it myself, sometimes you have a team of people that would really helps. Um, I piled the snow up, that took about an hour, and then I let it sit overnight, uh, packed as much as I could, and then the next day I shaped it for probably about an hour and a half to two hours. Okay. And then I came out at lunch and put a little bit of detail on it because it's so warm, it's gonna melt off. And yeah. 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 So you're gonna show us some of the process sure. for doing some of the detail too. I'm gonna put yes. my hammer down. So I'll show you a little bit. With, I left one of the ears. I wanna kind of create an indentation here to shape that ear. So I'm just gonna lightly press it in there like that and start cutting away some of the, some of the snow out here. It's very soft right now but it, you can see it really cuts very easily. So I'm just gonna follow the profile of the ear and cut into there. Okay. Very cool. And, and with it being this soft, it's very easy to come out of there. I was gonna say, I'm sure it's also easy to make a mistake and this whole ear comes off. So what happens if that happens? <laughs> <laughs> well, in warmer weather like this, we might be able to pack it back on okay. there. And in, in, if it's below a mid twenties, it's not gonna go back up. Okay, so, so are we gonna give this? Yes, okay. yep, go ahead. I go wanna see, it. how far in did you go there then? Uh, a little bit deeper than that, yep. Would you, like this, am I yep. doing it? You know, in all the years of Funski, I've never actually helped. Well, you should get out there sculpture. now. <laughs> I just usually get hot chocolate and walk. <laughs> that works too. What are some of the um, coolest things that you've done, or what are your favorite sculptures? Yeah. Um, one year I did a snow angel that uh, had wings sticking out of the side of it that got so thin that I kind of carved all the way through those wings, but they didn't fall off, so that was great. Wow. Um, I did a, one year I did a, an elephant that was really popular because it carved out underneath the legs and people could actually go up there and they were crawling underneath the really? elephant. Really? Oh boy, I bet that was a big people's, people's choice winner. So how many <laughs> times have you won people's choice? Uh, I, I don't honestly know, but it's been, it's more than five. Is there a sport for this outside of fun ski? I mean, what, what made you start to do it? I was inspired by fun ski okay. uh, because it, uh, they reached out to design and architecture firms to come out there as kind of a competition amongst the the, the uh, design firms. Do you want to give it a try or do you think I'm going to, I mean, I mean, I don't I even know, know why. Right? I don't even know why you would try it when I'm here, you know, like, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. It's a little easier than I think with something that's a little bit softer. I suppose in the colder, colder temperatures, it's harder. It's much it's much easier to get detail when it's colder. Okay. Uh, yeah, ideally, I can it's see how mid that would 20s. Be. It gets oh boy, to yeah, 40 degrees like easy. today, it, it will just flake right off. Yeah, that easily comes out, doesn't well, it? Well, thanks so much for letting us stop by and learn how to so make cool. these. Do you think we can make one of ourselves? I would love that. Of ourselves? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Life size and height even? Yeah, I, but I don't want to pile snow that high. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> Too high. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. This is